and I'll, okay, I'll so, just uh, tell you afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So can I go? Yes, go for it. Okay, go for it. Hi everyone, I'm Elias Solo, PhD student from Portugal, and my poster is titled The semi bayesian Implementation of Template Matching for Precise Gradient Velocities. So in this paper, in this poster, I present the SPART pipeline which holds a core assumption that a single radial velocity shift describes the difference between any given spectra and our master template. We use this assumption because, well, if we have a star being orbited by planetary companions, we expect to always find the same radial velocity shift independently of wavelength. So we, in we implement this model within a Bayesian framework, for more robust characterization of radial velocities, and then we study ARPs and expression data. Could you change the slide, please? Okay, so here I show um, the results of the SPARC pipeline over 1,000 observations of 30 something targets of espresso. In the upper panel, I showed the ratio of the radial velocity scatter of the template matching pipeline with the one from the CCF, and below one is better. So for M and K type stars, the SPARC pipeline shows an improvement or a decrease in radial velocity scatter. And for G-type stars, they are essentially the same, but we only have a small sample. In terms of median radial velocity uncertainty, we have here in the bottom panel, and, well, we can't really see much, but the median uncertainty given by the um, s part pipeline is better or sm smaller than one from the CCF, especially in M-type stars, which is concurrent with other template matching pipelines. And for the last, we'll just change one more time. Uh, we use this same data set to, to compute a nightly zero point of espresso shown here in these white points, and we estimate the upper precision limit of the instrument to be about 80 centimeters per second. And that's mainly it. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> and your time stuck. Okay, no. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Pia Cortez Uleta. I am a third year PhD student at the Astrophysics Laboratory of Marseille in France. I work with Isabel Boas. And what we are doing and what I'm presenting here is that we have a synergy program between SOFI and SPIRU. So SOFI is observing in the optical domain and SPIRU is observing in the near infrared. And what we want to do is to take quasi-simultaneous observations to model the stellar activity in the optical and in the near infrared more or less at the same time. So uh, what I'm showing the, in the poster is uh, one of the targets that we have here. We, are, we have mostly M dwarfs, and um, we observe this 205. We use a GP to model the uh, longitudinal magnetic field that we can get with SPIRU. We get a really good constraint in the rotational period. And uh, something that is really interesting is that we are observing more or less the same scatter in the radial velocities in the optical and in the near infrared. So what we are trying to do now is to use um, activity indicators to try to reduce this uh, contribution of the stellar activity. By now, we are only decreasing around one meter per second using the priors of the uh, activity indicators. And also we are exploring using near infrared spectral lines to uh, model the stellar activity for example, we found that the aluminium and iron lines are really good, could be really good to uh, model stellar activity. And actually, we are getting some hints of differential rotation in the stellar surface of this star. So if you have any questions or comments, you can find me around and we can have a coffee or something. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm Hao Chuan, uh, a first year PhD student working with Susan uh, here at uh, Oxford. So I would like to quickly sh show you my ongoing work on screening the effectiveness of mitigating stellar activity in our planet service. So we've been using the multi dimensional JP framework with the MED kernel, the fast MED kernel uh, introduced by Delis uh, to jointly model the stellar activity from the activity indicators with the RVs on nearly 300 Hertz targets. And uh, an example is shown here. So we found that we are able to well constrain around one third of the targets, I mean, based on the statistical uncertainties on the rotation period of the star we get from the posterior distribution. So we are these colored dots in this HR diagram. So we found that our framework works effectively on this mean sequence, sun like, I mean, G, K type stars, less effectively on other types of stars, for example, 
this earlier or late type stars or on stars that leaving the main branch. And for this, the stars we suggest a finer time sampling or sufficient time span of the observations. Uh, I mean, uh, for the future observations for the future RV service. And we hope this helps planning the observation strategy for like RV service like Part 3 or Plato in the future. And last but not least, we hope that the byproduct of this work will contribute to fine tuning the existing physical stellar model and the stellar evolution model. We're studying, for example, the evolution time scale of swells on the stellar surface uh, or the magnetic field of the double of the magnetic activities from the estimated parameters uh, of this model. So uh, please let me know if you're interested and we, we can discuss more. Thank you. Hi, yeah, thanks, Belinda. Um, my name is Thomas Wilson. I'm a research fellow here at the University of St. Andrews. And I'd like to briefly uh, highlight some of the work that I've led that was recently published in uh, Munras that uses the scalpels algorithm developed by Andrew Collier Cameron uh, to clean up uh, the, uh, the uh, activity-driven radial velocities uh, in the HARPS data for TI 1064. You can see that here in the top uh, left with the observed data in blue the uh, shape uh, driven uh, RVs, the activity there, the shift driven planets, and then two fitted uh, Keplerians and the residuals. This uh, data, along with cleaned up KOPS photometry uh, that used a PSF version of scalpels instead of a CCF uh, version, um, allowed us to obtain um, some very confident mass detections uh, and, real, and uh, radius detections for these planets, such that we could go ahead and do internal structure modeling, which you're seeing on the top right, um, that helps us to well characterize, especially planet B in this system. Um, for everything, we then uh, looked at the massive dense sub-Neptunes and seemed to find a subtle trend between uh, planet bulk density and metallicity, which could hint at planet formation effects. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Juan Tran, a graduate student at the University of Texas at Austin, and I'm going to present just very quickly a uh, poster that I've been doing with some of the CCA folks currently at this, uh, this workshop on capturing the spot-dominated stellar activity with in time series with latent uh, with a two latent Gaussian process model, and so this framework actually does a better job of predicting the behavior of in particular star spot driven stellar activity signals that we see in radial velocities than traditionally used GP models such as using just a single GP to model that or uh, serially training it on your photometry and then training it on your RVs. Uh, I'm showing a simple diagram of this on simulated data with our model and those traditional models on the left hand. And you can see that sort of this one G, uh, sorry, our two latent GP model fit does a much better job of predicting this quasi periodic behavior. And then I'm showing sort of the distribution of RMS of the data. And you can see that it improves it by a factor of 1.5 um, in very early tests. Um, test based on simulated data. And one of the things I, I want to point out that's really cool is that we're actually testing this performance of our model on simulated time series data generated uh, by the starring software package in which we've injected and um, evolved star spots on the surface of a stellar map and went very quickly and uh, physically motivated way produced by curves and radial velocities um, of surface maps with those injected emergent and decaying star spots. So if you are interested in um, the, this new framework that I've developed, please feel free to come up and talk to me anytime. Thank you. And lastly. Hello, all. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, my name is Norbert. I'm from Oxford and I will very quickly put a plug in for our recent paper about AUMIC. Uh, we are really excited about this, as Oscar mentioned, because we are able to detect essentially planets that are pretty much 50 times, if not a bit more, under the noise floor. Uh, if you're curious, there is a QR code that links directly to the paper. Uh, look us up on, look it up on archive, or just come chat to any of us. Thank you.